We are back for another segment with Ask Dr. Steve. And my name is Dan Mucci. I'm the Mission Advancement Director here at Child and Adolescent Behavioral Health. Today, we are examining a timely topic, seniors playing their final season and preparing for their final game, um, whether it's at the uh, high school level or the collegiate level. And Dr. Steve, as we all know, is a former athlete, high school and collegiate, so he's got lots of experience and is familiar with this topic, as he is with most of our other topics. So um, we're going to let Steve break this topic down, as always, for our coaches, our parents, and our athletes. Let's go to the parental side of things, which I all can right. probably relate to a little bit more yeah, than you, you can, can handle relate this to. Side. So uh -huh. I'm on the other side this time. But... Um, if a parent's uh, athlete child is being recruited, um, what is some advice you can give to that parent? Uh, we kind of touched on it earlier, especially if it's a first child or you know a child uh, that they haven't experienced this with. Uh, how you know can the parent best fit into those roles? Yeah, well, I think you have an an educational component where you can inform yourself about this process. And there's a lot of ways to inform yourself about this process, though. whether it's a Google search, looking on the NCAA for recruiting resources, reaching out to the coaches, athletic department administrators, other um, parents who have gone through this before. So just educating yourself so you're armed with the basics of an understanding of what's going on here. Again, it demystifies the process. And when you demystify the process, it reduces the stress associated with it. So there's educational piece. Uh, there's also the emotional piece of this too, where you're starting to feel some type of way about the fact that your child is being recruited. Um, that can be whether that's a, an ego enhancer, maybe it's, well, I'm going to save some money on college tuition here. So there's some excitement brewing. Maybe you get some notoriety in the community because your child is being recruited. So there's a lot of like these emotions that are kind of flowing around through there. So it's important to keep those emotions in check, look at them objectively, look at the situation objectively, just so that it provides a little bit of a distance and can kind of soften and manage some of the emotions associated with that. Uh, you also have your interaction with your child too. And um, the teenage years is often a set of years that's associated with autonomy and independence, but you have this major thing that's going on, i.e. college recruiting. And so parents can often want to like solicit information. How are you going? What did the coach say? Um, what do you think, who do you think is going to be at your game this week? And that can be sometimes <laughs> overbearing for the athlete. So as we've talked about in other podcasts is deliberately communicating with your athlete of, okay, this is a unique situation for both of us. None of us have been through this before. What role do you want us to play in this? How can we be a support for you? And the athlete might not know, but at least they have an opportunity to co-create and collaborate together versus it becoming this stressful thing that the parents are always kind of one directionally asking the athlete about, and they start to feel burdensome about that. So um, some things to keep in mind uh, as, as, as athletes and parents go through this. So uh, as a parent or as parents, you kind of have expectations of how that senior season may look. Um, if those expectations are not met, uh, how do you help your athlete or even help yourself with that type of challenging situation? Yeah, well, I remember seeing this quote that's, and I'm, I'm going to butcher it, but essentially the success or non-success of your child on the athletic field does not determine whether you are a good parent or not. And so that from a parent standpoint, I think is a good recognition that like the child in some ways are an extension of you, but you see a lot of parents who it's their ego, that like they get puffed up if their, if their child is performing right. well. And it, I can understand how seducing that might be, but it's important to recognize that um, they're two separate things. And so if the expectations from the parents haven't been met, it's important for us to do go through our own gut check and manage that 
by recognizing, okay, just because the scene, the season didn't go well, doesn't mean my child's athletics hope are completely destroyed. Doesn't mean that uh, my financial hopes are completely <laughs> destroyed. Doesn't mean that um, my child isn't going to be a success in the future. Doesn't mean that there aren't more interesting, cool things that uh, me and my child can do in the future. So kind of recognizing a lot of that in terms of the athlete is concerned is it's going to be hard and it's allowed to be hard. It, and no one says you know, if you fall short of your expectations that it's easy. And there's a lot of athletes who have fallen short of their expectations and have used that as a motivational fuel to either do better the next year or um, take that to a different endeavor or to realize, you know what, in life, sometimes shit doesn't go the way that we want it to. And we just have to hold on to that, recognize that, but continue to go down our life journey. So I think there's a lot of opportunities there, but seeking support, whether as a parent or as an athlete, to be able to process some of these things, I think is also a really good decision too. Yeah, so it's senior night for the parents. Uh, lots of emotions there. Maybe the dad helped coach the child in Little League. The mom was the supportive person in the booster clubs or the team sport, held the team meals, et cetera. Um, what is kind of the best way or advice for parents to handle that night as well? Like, certainly it's an honor to walk your child across the field, the court, the track, what, whatever the sport is, but it's a little bit emotional for the parents as well. Yeah. Soak it up, right? Kind of like what we said with the athletes, soak it up, be proud, be present, be supportive. Um, obviously cheering them on with the game, just as you would uh, attending any ceremonies, attending the banquets, uh, attending any parades or senior night festivities and uh, really showing you know, your own appreciation for your athlete and the hard work and de uh, dedication and character that your son or daughter brought to the experience. So those are all things that that the parent's role can um, accomplish, as well as giving gratitude towards yourself as parents. You know, you've driven them to practice. You've set aside money for uniforms. You've purchased, you know, five pizzas so their friends could come over and hang out after, after a game. Um, and also reflecting on the positive memories that you've had, um, watching your athlete, engaging with other parents, some of the social group. And so though it's an ending, certainly for the athlete, it's also an ending for the parents as well. And to hold that once again with care and gravitas. It's okay that you're experiencing these various things, but it's important to manage and process them um, appropriately. Which kind of leads into the next question. The season wrapped up, the final home game, the tournament, you know, depending on the sport has ended. Parents begin to see those friendships they've built up of attending summer games or just season to season seeing uh, parents. And I know for myself, life kind of changes. You think those relationships are going to go on, but other things kind of step in. You either have another child, uh, maybe something happens with your parents or just other things. What's the best way for a parent to prep for this change? And I know it was very challenging for myself because I did hang out a lot with my son. I did practice with him extra. And when he went off to college, I did the best I could, but it's still challenging. So uh, offer some tips there. Yeah. Well, there's, there's, there's a lot in that. From a social standpoint, I mean, truthfully, some parents are like, thank God, I don't have to hang out with these people anymore, you know? <laughs> so there is a little bit of, there is a little bit of that and this recognition that sometimes things change. And this really speaks to kind of a larger philosophical understanding of life, right? That there are change and transition over the course of life. In fact, the only thing that doesn't change in life is the fact that there's change in <laughs> life. And so how we handle and manage these things, I think sometimes it's cool to take a step back and think about what does this say about me and my ability to, willingness uh, to, philosophical understanding of change and transition of my life, uh, within my life. And because really it serves as, as a metaphor. Um, in the case of you know, kids going off to college, that is another very 
symbolic transition and the role that you play as a as a parent that maybe would have been more hands-on or interactive that starts to change as as we old and we develop and we all establish greater autonomy as 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 young children growing into adulthood so there's a lot of like life things that are baked into the ending of an athletic season so there's no super easy answer here other than the fact that it is okay, right? That we can acknowledge the impact that these changes have on us. And sometimes going and seeking support, whether that's from your partner, uh, a loved one, a family member, uh, seeking psychological support to counsel, um, can just give one an opportunity to just let some of the stuff out that's in our head and our hearts just, just out on the table and now we can get a better picture of it because these are tremendous challenges and certainly uh, a few phrases from Dr. Steve uh, is, is, is not going to necessarily cover it because it brings up a lot of life things that are critical in our own life and in, in the lives of others. Yeah, so uh, banquet time again, kind of that's the final step uh probably when when i was definitely growing up and maybe when you were growing up uh the athlete or the parents chipped in to get the coach a gift so often now those support groups are the ones uh buying the gift for the coach or showing the appreciation what are other ways that parents can show appreciation to a coach um you know as their senior graduates and is ready to move on yeah, it's a, it, it can uh, actually bring into question one's particular love language, too. So some individuals express gratitude and appreciation in a variety of different ways. Some people really appreciate gifts. Some people appreciate words of affirmation. So sending like a really nice note. Um, other folks um, really appreciate time. So maybe you volunteer or do like continue to do booster things, you know, so those can can be there. Um, acts of service, you know, so that might include um, attending a practice or something. So there's a lot of different ways that um, parents and, and the, the others can show support. And, but again, it's intentional, you know, so talking with your child, how do we want to, how do we want to show uh, this appreciation for, for coach and the coaching staff um, or as a small group, right? As a parental group, as a senior group, you know, having that conversation, how do we want to be intentional about this? And that's always the name of the game is, is ha handling this with care and gravitas. This isn't just about coming up with something quick and Googling top presents to give to a coach <laughs> after the season. That might help from a brainstorming perspective, but handle it with care, right? Have this as a, as a nice extension of, of you to the, to the coach to represent the end of the season and the appreciation that you have have for them. There's no right or wrong answer here. Um, yeah, I think, you know, you want to TP the coach's house necessarily as a, <laughs> as a gift, but, um, but just knowing what's, what's, what's going to feel meaningful to you um, and, and likely meaningful to the coach um, and, and making the decision from there. Yeah. And I know from a parental side of things, especially when I help coach uh, my son's basketball team and kind of moving up the ladder and so I tried to teach him as he got older, we did give a small gift of appreciation. Maybe the scene, season did not go how you hoped, but that coach also gave his time away from his family to uh, coach you, even though he's getting paid, it's still a commitment and you still need to uh, in some way show appreciation, whether it's a thank you card, whether it's a small gift card to somewhere you know. Um, I think it's also, teaching the child a little bit of respect and these are how things should be handled in life. I think that's great. I think, I think it's, um, that's great advice. It's a great way of looking at it. Um, and you know, it's not always necessary. You know, there's a lot of ways to show appreciation. Um, even if it's not necessarily right in the moment, maybe it's coming back for like a booster club thing and we're going in, um, just making your face seen at a, a, a preseason workouts or something. So there's a lot of ways to do that. Um, but I, I, I think you're absolutely right. So we've come to the end of another great topic. Is there anything else you feel like we skipped or that you just thought of 
like afterwards that you could offer either a coach, athlete, or parent in regards to senior season? Well, it's interesting. You know, the season, the seasons of, of life and a lot of the things that we're talking about here, not to get too dramatic, but these are what we encounter throughout the entirety of our lives. And um, we're never going to be able to fully control that. It's just a matter of how do we surf the waves of change and not drown in them or continually try to swim against them. Because if we try to continually swim against them, it's going to exhaust us. And instead, it's critical for us to be able to surf the, the waves of change. And so if you find yourself, if you're out there, whether you're a coach, an athlete, or a parent, you're just, you're just struggling with how you approach these endings or these beginnings, just take some time to reflect. You know, if you're somebody that it's like, oh, it's the, it's the end of the season, no big deal. You know, maybe you're somebody that kind of just quickly goes through transition to not really want to feel the emotion associated with it. Or if you're somebody that hangs out there way too long, how does that impede your ability to shift and change and be agile um, as you progress into the future? So just kind of being able to zoom out, I think also helps you to be able to zoom back in and handle the nature of whatever change or transition you're facing. Awesome. This wraps up another great edition of Ask Dr. Steve, who is partnering with CNA on our Athlete Strong for Mental Health initiative. Just a reminder, Dr. Steve is owner of Mindurance. It's an online coaching platform to help individuals manage stress, enhance performance, and lead others in design life. So Steve, once again, thank you for your time, and we look forward to speaking with you in the future about another great topic. Hey, my pleasure. Have a great day.